My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Iritus, Lord of the Dead. Uh, here we are going to be having a look at the characters that I had not yet detailed for you. That is the Vampire and the Dampir. We'll have a look at their information, read out their abilities, and then go from there. Vampire. Uh, decent attack stat, high in their dread stat. Starting accuracy is pretty good. Starting evasion and lock are also pretty good. They start with a block and a ward as well as six initiative, which makes them pretty fast. No armor, no resistance. A vampire is a special kind of minion, for they are the only ones that have learned to exist within mortal societies. Because of this, they are reluctant to join any necromantic armies, preferring to stay hidden within their own secret covens. Only the scent of cursed blood can be used to draw them out, and also acts as a perfect offering. Then, if they acknowledge a mage's power, they will provide their aid, providing one is willing to trust a scheming bloodsucker. Now, the abilities of this minion will go down the middle... Uh, you know what? We should probably go across, actually, first. So, Bite, it's a physical attack from the front two to the front two. It's 100% physical damage. It's decent. Uh, I can get plus 10 Vigor in order to change it to a critical hit. will stun for a turn. A lot of you can probably already reckon where I'm going with this one. Uh, and then Savage Bite is also a critical hit. will deal 200% damage. Then we have Blood Strike. It is front three positions to the back three positions of the enemy party. Moves you back in one position as well. Deals 80 damage. Uh, I can get it to deal 100 damage. Or I can get it to target the enemy primary and the enemy behind it. So give ourselves a little bit of AoE. Bloody Offering. This is support from the back three lines. Iridus gains 40 wrath and the vampire loses 20 vigor. Mesmerize changes that to 20 wrath and 10 vigor. Uh, 10 Mana and Hypnosis changes it to 50 Wrath. Hysteria can only be used from the front three positions to any of the enemy positions. The target loses 30% of its current Vigor, bosses lose 15, and the Vampire loses 30 Vigor. Yeah, that could actually be really useful in a boss fight. Probably exclusively a boss fight, though. Uh, that can change into Berserk so that it buffs the enemy but does far more damage and ignores Ward. Or I can just lose less vigor. There's also all specs from the back two positions to any of the enemy positions moves forward by two spaces. All attacks against the target ignore both block and ward until the battle ends. The vampire also loses 10 vigor and it itself ignores block and ward. I can also give the target negative 20 accuracy for three turns or I can give them negative 10 evasion for three turns. Both of those seem pretty impactful here, actually. Uh, but I'll probably go for Grand Auspex, right? Because then that'll up our accuracy to offset the lock that we're going for. Uh, there's also Bloodthirst is her ultimate. Until the end of battle, the vampire gains Vigor equal to 50% of the physical damage that it inflicts. It does not spend an action, but it also doesn't stack. Now, I can buff that with critical hits, deal 50% more damage. Or... I can buff it to 65% of what we damage, we will heal. So we're probably going to be building a vampire here. Like, spoiler alert, vampire seems like a good idea to sub into this party. Probably instead of one of the skeletons. Uh, but let's also have a look at Fallen Damp here before we make any decisions. Fallen Damp here has significantly worse attack stats than the previous class, but has significantly higher luck and evasion, a little bit lower accuracy. Uh, and starts with similar statistics. Otherwise, a little bit lower initiative. The Fallen Dampir feels the burden of her curse far stronger than other minions. Submitting herself to her vampiric nature only served to put into perspective all the things that she had lost, even though her murderous strength had not waned a bit. Her only escape from the shame and guilt of her submission lies in the brief bouts of bloody euphoria she experiences as she drains your enemies dry. She has a whole eternity ahead of her to get used to it. This is the first time this has turned into a second person telling, I think. Usually doesn't say you, it usually says the mage or Iridus or the necromancer, something like that. All right, abilities. The first one is from back two to any of the front three from the enemy. It ignores armor and block and does 100% physical damage. Uh, we can change it to deal 25% more damage or so that it doesn't miss. Doesn't miss seems pretty good here. Uh, aim for the Vein. It's a physical attack from the front two to the front two of the enemy party. A critical hit restores Vigor equal to 40% of the damage dealt. Uh, you can get that to do 50% of the damage dealt or have it restore mana instead. Mocking Repost. It's a stance. It deals stress damage. 
It's a stance that deals stress damage. Oh, and it triggers against any enemy who attacks her. Right? Okay, so it's a stance that doesn't attack that deals 100% stress damage and interrupts stances when it targets someone. And the effect of the stance is that she enters the stance and deals 80% physical damage to any enemy that attacks her. That was a little bit complicated. Because I usually think of a stance as something that just has a trigger conditional rather than something that actually has a targeted effect and then a trigger conditional afterwards. Uh, we can have it so that she always crits on counterattacks or that she heals from those counterattacks. A trap can be placed on any position. Enemies and traps can't move. All right, that makes sense. Uh, I can place it for an extra turn or I can make them lose all initiative with it. It's also Pain Blast, a magic attack. Attack five times, dealing 25% of your normal attack per damage. Uh, and the target loses all resistance until the end of the battle. Or I can attack for 30% instead. Which is fine, I guess. Does it change anything else? Nope. Uh, or I can make that ability cheaper. This is an ultimate ability, it's worth noting. Uh, there's also Sundering Squall. Attacks three times, dealing 40% damage with each attack and all... Or rather, the target loses all armor until the end of battle. So that's clearly just Pain Blast, Sundering Squall. It's a parallel to it. This gives me the ability to diversify my damage among magical and physical on the fly. Sundering Storm increases the damage and increases the strikes, right? No, Sundering Storm increases the damage and this increases... Or rather, decreases the cost. That makes sense. All right, I don't think I'm going to be slotting a uh, Fallen Dampier in here. I think I will be throwing a Vampire into this party. I also think I'll probably give them better equipment because I do want them to have some luck. And also, I have the ability to get a Vampire with pretty good equipment right now. Uh, a Vampire in position three is not a thing, is it, right? They're position two or nothing, right? Yeah, they're position two or nothing. I don't want them to have all specs at the start of each battle. Uh, so... If that's the case, and it is the case, because that's the case, let's get a blue piece of equipment here. That's lock and evasion. I could make purple, but I'm not going to. Let's go for blood, because that obviously is going to be a pretty primary building material here. Accuracy and evasion and accuracy and evasion. Oh, yes, those are exactly what we were looking for. And then finally, let's get a heart in here as well. Tab over the hearts and build myself a blue one. Extra vigor and accuracy. That's so good. That is so good. We got a bunch of extra accuracy on her even before we recruit her. Welcome to my breathless ranks, Night Mistress. Also, welcome to level three, Night Mistress. The first things that we're going to want to do are, yeah, critically hit will stun for a turn is obviously incredibly important. And then also upgrading your accuracy by 10. I think those are the two that I go for immediately here. Yeah. Now, prove yourself worthy of my investment. So with the, I believe it's negative 25. Yeah, the negative 25 from that. This vampire already has 12 down from that. So 88. 88 is okay. I'd like to get an etched bone in your hands. Can I do that actually right now? Extraction. Just make myself an etched bone out of two low-level bones. Her accuracy is the most important thing, but it's her accuracy and her crit chance. Which of these is lucky? Golden tooth? Okay. It's no gold, but it will do. Yeah, I'm gonna make just. One golden tooth, starting turn at turn three, and uh, once every three turns, whatever. Uh, these are just for giving you a little bit extra in statistics. So plus five to lock and plus eight to accuracy. Ongoing. Also, I don't believe you've been named. We've got, I think... I think currently we have everyone accounted for except for... No, we don't. Okay, never mind. But we'll award the last name that hasn't yet been awarded in this series. That makes you Patricia... Now, Carl of the Wild, I could put you on the second... Sorry, on the front line, right? Then put Patricia on the second. 
How does this overall impact our build? Well, Call of the Wild in the first line is now our only big defensive. Which is fine. Can they change this yet? No. So apparently Unnerving Fortitude, which is respond with Dread against the target that hits you when you're in stance. Uh, apparently that was causing some bugs in the game, so that's why it's being changed. And apparently it's only a temporary change, so... As soon as we're out of this patch, which read as soon as we start the next campaign, Unnerving Fortitude likely will be doing something else for us. Right? It's totally fine to be standing here in the second position doing all this stuff, right? I think so. Maybe I want to add a little bit of extra experience to these characters. I did say that, right? Especially after I just picked up Veteran Commander, so I put Mimir in my hand. It embellishes my undead features. Let's go out and check out these ancient coffin. Minions record. Once every three turns, clear all debuffs from the minion. That's really good. One ward when no, okay, we definitely take misrecord here. Ah, I can use this. And then I think we probably just pop it on someone who needs to deal a little bit of extra damage. Uh unfortunately neither Neo nor Harkonian have Rose for a Lady unlocked yet, so I don't really have any reason to put it in one of them over the other. Battle time. Okay, I don't think I'm too nervous about this ending, Pomati. Yikes. Okay, start by trying to stun the heavy. Yeah. Good. Now I'll probably go for the trader, just because the elite alchemist in the second line uh, could get done by the vampire. We missed, actually. Wild. Been a long time since I've seen that happen. I'll taunt up. Everyone else is doing strikes constantly. It's fine to taunt up. Damn. It wouldn't have mattered if I removed that block with the skeleton. Sadly. Keep off is loose all armor and resistance. Yeah, whatever. Uh I mean I could just start hitting the Elite Alchemist, try and deal some damage there, but I still think it's correct for Call of the Wild basically to stance constantly. That's a big problem. Now we need to focus on that. Let's get bloodthirst off as well, by the way. That has to happen. Yeah, I don't have the ability to not target the trader without getting the trader to buff someone, so I'll throw that to move myself backwards. Rectifying the parting positioning a little. And hopefully crit you. Hopefully crit you. That's a lot of actions to commit and do nothing to my enemies right there. That's really unfortunate for us. Do need to get that stun first, though. Go for the block again. It's doing fine. Okay. God damn it. No. Got a crit. Never mind. I don't need to crit if I... Oh, god damn it. I would have needed to crit to get through the ward. Oh, that sucks so much. This fight is way longer than it needs to be. Crit. God damn it! Patricia! Patricia was my shield breaker for a significant period of time in my most recent Darkest Dungeon Let's Play, that being the playthrough I did for Color of Madness. And she was just an absolute crit lord. The abs, like the whole time, it was ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I need to stun this heavy flamethrower right now. Good. 
Oh, never mind. That's going to purge the debuff, and now the flamethrower gets their turn off. Ridiculous. Moving forward at the end of a turn. How dare you? Also, that starts constantly being up despite everything. This is really, really dangerous. Look at our HP. We take 20 damage. 19 to 20 damage next turn. That could already be lethal. All right. Pyromania is really, really annoying. No, that's not going to do it. Yeah, I might end up losing my entire party here just due to... Oh, never mind. Thank you for moving forward. I really appreciate that, actually. All right, I think Call of the Wild needs to get in the battle here. Unfortunately, we're not particularly effective against enemies with a load of physical resist, which these have. Thanks for that. Okay, at least they're not in the stance. Trying to focus really heavily here just in case I have the ability to save any of this. Heavy flamethrower is so ridiculous. Oh, never mind. That didn't move you back. It canceled, it canceled your stance, but you're left in the front line. Cool! Someone's got to crit him eventually. that really goes through his armor. Yeah, we're losing the rest of our Bride of Iridus here, which is probably going to break the back of the run. That used to be one of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, th we've seen this before, actually, kill a party. This is also probably going to kill the run, by the way. Um, we've seen this before, kill a party, and that is the trader in the third line, or the trader in any fight, being able to prevent you from being able to do anything to the heavy uh, fire thrower because I stun it and then the trader removes that stun and despite the fact that I was constantly targeting the trader at the start of the fight I kept missing them and not critting them which just put us completely out damn it damn it damn it all Ah, almost got the heavy flamethrower down, though. 16 to 20 damage on the next turn, and that target can get itself to the front line real easily in this party combination. That's really unfortunate. Ah, well. It happens. Oh, cool. I might actually get to kill him. Let's see. Hey, I do. Lovely. At the very least, I got some revenge. Yeah. There it dies. You only delayed the inevitable. That's really unfortunate. We got really, really, really screwed over with a lot of the early attacks there. These aren't gonna have... I mean... Mom's... Kyle? Maybe I can... Maybe I can still live. I did just lose two characters that I decked out with blue equipment fully. Which is a little bit rough. And also, I just spent a lot of the resources that you use to make a Bride of Iridus. So, that's a little bit rough as well. Oh god, we just lost a whole squad there as well, and I have to figure out what their names were. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Uh, it was definitely Drew. 
No, definitely Drew. Definitely uh, Patricia died there. Neo died there. I think Carl of the Wilds and Hark died there as well. That makes sense. Yeah, Drew is out here. Yeah, and excavation has been empty for a while as well. Yeah, this is... This has been falling apart for a while. I think the earlier that we pivoted to the vampires, we were probably better off. Was that true? Or maybe it was vampire a wrong change for me. No, it was a correct change. They're useful minions. Alright. Let's give this the final chance it has at winning. Guess I'll take the bundle of dynamite into the next combat. Undead features, no? I still have an elite this floor, don't I? Yeah, an elite in a couple spaces time. So I want to leave the scroll of Skullfall for that. If possible, obviously. Uh, I'm not going to have a high enough level party for this to matter. The Nobleman's Garb, that is. So All enemies lose one water at the beginning of each battle. Sure, let's do that. Finally, this item finds its way into my capable hands. It'll make it easier to keep the... Oh no, the flamethrower is already at the front of the party is the thing. Hmm. Right of Iridus at the very least will have the ability to possibly move them back. Serve me well, my minion. All right. This is basically the final attempt we have to make this work, and I'm almost certain we're already dead here. Like, completely dead in the water. But... <sighs> yeah, you can go up there. Could make a couple raids. Why do I get this sinking feeling? Let's make three of those. No, two of those. Actually, no, three, so that we can heal up the skeleton, just in case. An unassuming creation. I'm halfway, I'm halfway in between, this run is already dead, don't try and save it. And you should still do absolutely everything you have in your power to make this run work right now. I think this is the best that I can do currently. And then just hope that the battle goes better, frankly. I mean, not having an elite flamethrower is pretty good. Refreshments have arrived. That's us, actually. Ooh, good crit. To actually kill the traitor before their turn. Hey. Good block right there. I'll get physical damage against that target while I have the ability. Yeah, moms, you heal off your crits, don't you, sir? Ooh, Ideally, do some kill. crits, please. Good. Damn it, no crit for moms there. Uh, it does look like we're going to make, make it out of this fight pretty happily and easily. Without any real concern at any point. That's gonna leave Unfortunately, mind. that's not on a character that has Lung Piercer right now. Also, I lost Mimir in the previous battle. So, unfortunately, I don't get like a bunch of levels up here. God. The accuracy of the vampire is absolutely going to kill me. In the previous fight, the accuracy of that vampire arguably did. This is annoying because I actually did make them as accurate as I possibly could have. Another step towards my eternal kingdom. Okay. So those two talents come in. We take anything. Do I have anything that affects? Well, I mean, there's the relentless evil tree. That's the next thing you just go down in general, right?
Blood Curse is good for lowering the lock of an enemy, but... Target minion's next attack will be guaranteed to be a critical hit. Yeah, Fate can be useful as well. I think this is probably still going to be essential just for upkeep over the course of a battle because we don't have that much defensiveness. I need nothing but my anger to purge this world. Okay. So now this Bride of Iridus is on level two. Lovely. Good to see. Let's get Long Piercer up on you. Let's get a vent in the next space. I'm probably already ready to just move forward to that event. I okay, will just leave everything out there as it currently is. Let's get a Philosopher's Stone just in case. Now I will make mortals tremble before me. Well, even more than previously. Alright. <sighs> when the dwarves collapse a section of underground... I've already seen this one. Uh, so we've already seen this event. Spend some time trying to figure out what happens here. Lose all initiative in your advance, but... Blindly reactivating or seem to spend time trying to figure out what's happening here are the only two we really care about because drain, uh, drain the magic from these apparatuses is a quick procedure to gain mana. Trying to blindly reactivate the experiments. You think you recognize the rune for fatality among the stones? We'll spend time trying to figure out what's happening here. I think I've done spend time before, so I'm going to do blindly. You entrust some skeletons to tinker around with the dwarf machines, hoping for the best. Unfortunately, their mindless and mediocre tampering only cause some kind of a malfunction that triggers an explosive reaction. Needless to say, you will not be returning here. Thankfully, I didn't lose any minions doing that. I can't afford to just throw away minions scouting right now. Thankfully, this is a fight that you know, I think we're pretty well equipped for. They've got magical defense, but we don't attack magically right now. Or in general. Okay. Hey, there we go. An actual crit. A real life crit. It can happen, apparently. Oh, speaking of, yikes. Oh, Kyle. You madman. <laughs> now that's damage. Good lord! It's definitely not who I should have targeted with that. Yeah. You will soon embrace your Hell yes! Resistance. That got rid of all of the block and crit on every attack that wasn't getting rid of block. Ridiculous. Basically as good as it could possibly be. Uh, Mom's here in the back line. You have to use Master's Rubs. Just every time you have the ability, you have to do that. Because it crits often enough that it's, it's real good healing. Okay, so those debuffs have been severe to attack and dread. Yeah, whatever. Good. One down. More materials. Ooh, I didn't think Let's see if we can get you stunned for a turn. Not so far, but it's possible we kill you. Because Hell yeah, it is! The breathless I could totally see this party being like a really rude encounter, but uh, thankfully for us, it's been totally fine. And it is going to be a large part of helping me build my party back up. Uh-huh. My kingdom comes. Okay, and crit him. Damn it. Could have been some more healing for us. As your suffering ends, your service begins. All right, so now we have this vampire level up their accuracy because your accuracy has just been too bad. And now moms? I think I'll probably just have you upgrade to adore him. Get back to just for the extra damage. Okay. 
So now that this Vampire and Bride of Eridus have actually been used for a moment in time here, they'll get names, and Drew, Kyle, and Mom's the only ones that have survived so far, so we will now get a... Commander Kronos II. As well as our Serpent Frog the Second. Neat. All right, we'll see what we've got in the Ancient Coffin. Could be particularly useful. Initiative and extra accuracy upon receiving damage. Eh. Ward and setting parts on fire. No, I don't set targets on fire. I don't really need ward. On receiving damage, get extra accuracy for three turns. And uh, here's Necklace there as well. I mean, resistance is pretty important right now. Toss it with the rest. Okay. I think what I am going to do is I am going to use another extraction to get another etched bones because the accuracy ah, on the, the vampire, Commander Kronos, is really important. And then I'll give Commander Kronos each of those pieces of equipment. And then I'll pop on Scroll of Skullfall for the next... Uh, do I pop on Scroll of Skullfall? It's possible the next combat is just elite golems. Like, golden golems. Alright, I'll scout it. Fine. The path signed. Let's hope there was no fine print. We actually do have to check the composition of the party. So they start with a lot of ward. But Scroll of Skullfall will be useful here, so. Totally happy to run out of there. Pop the Scroll of Skullfall on. And negative ward for all enemies. It's really important at the start as well. Let's go in. Oh, that's interesting. Looks like I managed to remove extra stacks of ward from two triggers of the Archmage's robes coming in. That doesn't make that sense. That doesn't make sense, is what I mean. Um... Okay. That's just getting rid of ward, setting up for the skelly fall. Skull fall, rather, sir. Vampire, please hit targets. Very important. I gave you so much accuracy. Perish. That's not good. I actually didn't want that one to crit. Oh, I actually don't even get to skull for this fight. Uh, or rather this round. I guess that's fine. It is ultimately the Oracle that I want to hit with Skullfall. Stop marking my party! God damn it. It's really annoying. Well, at least we now have access to the Oracle. There you go. You lose all ward. I can finally skull fall. Gosh. Now moms go through with the crit. Oh, good crits. Kind of want to have Carl Taunt here. And in fact, I think I will. What was that? So the Geomancer just hit my entire party and crit on a stun, but did a ridiculous amount of damage to each of them. Say hello, That's so rude. Burning friend. Okay, Galvanic Strike. We should try and get you out of that stance. Hey, we actually did something to the Elite Oracle. Lovely. Uh, doesn't look like we can get 
the enemies out of their stance right now. Yikes. Yep, that's a whole lot of damage to a whole lot of party. That's a whole lot of damage to a whole lot of party. And you're striking it right up again. Okay. That's, that's good to see. Uh, so that target's already dead. I'm going to go for the possibility of critting here. It's a 34. Good. Okay, that Elite Dwarven Warrior is now almost dead. Now it is. I'll cancel that stance if you don't mind. Alright, so I think what's happening here is you're not allowed to put... Or not allowed. You shouldn't put the Geomancer at the back of the party. I think that's what's happening here. Because all hell broke loose as soon as the Geomancer got to the back of the party. Up until then, eh, it was kind of fine. Everything was kind of going okay. Uh, definitely use that because apparently I had not used it yet, this combat. Hey, nice healing. Yep. Was that Moms? I think that was Moms. That's really disappointing if that was Moms. It was. Serpent Frog the second lives though. Sadly, the crit was just short of being able to kill the Geomancer in time. All right, come on, crit. Oh, never mind. I'm not even in position where I can crit. God damn it. I actually have nothing I can do to this enemy right now. I'm going to make you lose accuracy to try and save my teammates against you. Extinction of life. Uh-huh. You had to make sure just to kill the raw, the last Pride of Iridus there, right? Had to make absolutely certain that this party was torn to shreds. You rude dude. That's part of the reason that I do want, like, a glossary of the enemy characters and wiki so that I can look at where they attack, what positions they have to be in to attack, and things of that nature. So I have, what, two skeletons? No, I think I have no brain materials to build anyone right now. I have the ability to build a couple more Brides of Iridus. I have a lot in this tree as well. Hmm. Can this be saved over the course of those? Maybe. Maybe. We're going to need to make brides out of pretty low parts. Oh, honey, you are so wonderfully rotten. Okay. So neither of those is level two. That's going to be the biggest problem is getting past the next room. Uh, I can replace one of the brides of Iridus with a second skeleton right now. Serve me well, my minion. Damn it, but Kyle and Commander Kronos probably shouldn't go back out. But also, if I don't have Kyle, I have no high-level minions in my party at all. How are they doing anything ever? Let's check the chest. Well, there's the Amulet of Perfection, something we've definitely wanted for a really long period of time. Minions made up of four uncommon parts or more gain an additional 20 vigor during battle. It's kind of like temporary HP atop the rest of your HP. 
So between that and the standard darkness, you can have, you know, minions full healed after every battle, basically. I'm worried. I'm worried because I'm risking this party by taking it out, but also if I don't take this party out and I lose like a whole squad of, you know, level ones and level twos, then I've just wasted so many resources again. And that becomes another thing that I just don't have much, uh, don't have much ability to respond to. It's the, it's levels is the thing that we're limited by at the moment. I don't necessarily think the arena was the fix to that. I think just changing my party com uh, composition a little bit earlier and playing more carefully around the heavy flamethrower and the elite geomancer in particular is the better way of handling this rather than just looking at, oh, my character's a low level. Okay, so what gives you levels? Arena, arena gives you levels because this game will always end with running out of resources, if you don't win, that is. Will always end out of running out of one resource or another. And those resources are often transferable, right? Like, a minion is as good as its level, but also its stats and its equipment and also the things that you have unlocked in the library tree and also the, well, I mean, the equipment that they have, all the parts they have is the excavation down there as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, build an arena and start stocking people in that really, really soon. What it also does mean is that while I was running those two high-level parties, I probably should have been refreshing each of those parties with high-level characters really, really quickly. Another thing that it probably means is we were too late in hitting Grey Matter. We need to hit that earlier, so we need to prioritize that in our build order a lot faster. And... I think we correctly use Relic Seeker. Unfortunately, I don't know what my next build is going to be, so I don't know whether I'm going to be going Selected Bones Love Potion really early, so I'm not going to know how I prioritize this tree. But what I do know is I need Grey Meta a lot earlier, so I have the ability to bounce back. Because right now, I still have the parts to bounce back, I just don't have the experience on any of my characters. Yeah, we have to take this. Let's go for another artifact as well. Uh, gaining 45 wrath at the beginning of battle. I mean, that's pretty good. That gets Commander Kronos the ability to start healing from the first attack on. Not bad. Oh, look, it's a flamethrower. Add an elite gym answer in the backspace. Good, good to see you. the flamethrower back immediately uh why were we capable of doing that uh all of these enemies have negative one ward i think do the heavy flamethrowers start with ward at all no uh, it's just showing their current stats i'm not certain if they start with ward or not feels like a thing i should know though um Stress across the entire enemy party here. Could be useful, but I do want my vampire doing vampiric things. Break their bones. Okay, good work, Kyle. Commander Kronos, time to go into vampiric form. And time to deeply bite. Good crit. Decent damage, at least. Unfortunate party positioning there. At the very least, we just got a lot of accuracy. Yeah. That unit being able to move too forward off the back of that is really, uh, really frustrating a little bit. Just throw that at the Alchemist. Because they look like the target I'm going for phys with physical damage rather right now. Eventually, I do have to kill this heavy... Oh, never mind. I should have used a different attack there, obviously. Push you backwards. 
That's another thing. I should have left one of my Brides Viridus with the ability to push the Heavy Flamethrower backwards because something I wasn't thinking about is you can cancel their stance because comparing Warning Shot by base, right? Where it pushes a target one space backwards, which already dispels stances. And I was thinking, oh, we'll take you won't get him because then even if they're in the back of the party, we can interrupt their stance because if you're pushing them to interrupt their stance and you can't push them backwards, you don't interrupt the stance. So you won't get him fixes that problem. Sweet. And the target is unable to move during the next turn. So enemies that are approaching the front of the party, sweet. I can prevent them from approaching the front. Uh, but what it causes a problem, as we saw with the near loss of an entire party to an elite demolitions expert, is that that not having the ability to move back anymore is completely destructive when those members of the party are really good in position one. And all you can do at that point is start interrupting their stances. Especially because this character isn't using a stance. They use the stance to get to the front party, right? But as soon as they're there, it's not a stance-based attack for the heavy fire thrower to go off. So I can't cancel it. And the stance of the elite demolitions expert also can't be cancelled. So if I ever did this party again, I probably won't in the next one, right? The only reason we did this party this time in particular is because I had the ring in order to do the crit build. So I'm not going to be trying to do this same thing again in the next. Uh, so it's just something in general to keep in mind for the future when I have unreliable stuns otherwise because otherwise I'm relying on the stuns hitting the heavy flamethrower and unfortunately that was not something that it turns out we could have relied on I'm going to continue going through this fight but I, I do feel like we're probably already dead like through the campaign dead I don't know when it happened but at some point, I just became incapable of hitting any enemy. Like, really unfortunate. That push is incredible, though. That's actually one thing I could have considered. Commander Kronos, do you have... No, because there was a Bride of Eridus in the third position. So I was thinking about moving Commander Kronos somehow. Uh, four, no, they were already in the... Yeah, never mind. There wasn't a skeleton that could get in the third line in order to get rid of the heavy flamethrower in the last battle. <laughs> hey, got insanity on you, though. Lost initiative, lovely. One enemy down. God, let me crit you. Actually, that Bride of Iridus is level one. Crit wouldn't matter. Oops. Oh, come on! See? After that turn, that enemy is already at the front of the party now. Fine, I have to target someone. Savor these last few heartbeats. Can I? Yeah, I should be able to cancel your stance in the next action. That's gonna be fine. Hope there will still be enough left Sadly, that's not a stun. Get him. Push him back. Lovely. The party lives on for the moment. Yeah, having Commander Kronos constantly there in the third line is really unfortunate for this build. Again, back at the front of the party already. Uh, I don't really have too much I can do here. So I have 11 Vigor, so I can Grand All Specs to move forward, but then I have one Vigor left on the Vampire here. I can use Blood Strike to move backwards, but then I'm guaranteed that I have to use Grand All Specs next turn to move forwards. As soon as a, a vampire gets in the back of the party, it looks like their only ways to move forward or stall both use Vigor. You can stall with Bloody Offering and you can move forward to Grand Auspex. That's rough. 
All right, that's a little bit of healing there, at least. Send you back. I'm going to go shield banger probably twice here as well. I think we've already lost the ability to win this as a physical fight. So I think the only thing I can do is try and turn it into a stress fight. There goes the vampire. That was one of our last high level units. So our only high level unit now is Kyle, I think. Please crit. Please crit. Literally, it doesn't matter what happens there unless we crit. Thank you, Train. Ooh, that was a crit as well. Hang on. Oh, so if the enemies crit themselves, they don't cause stress? Seems mean. I guess if we are going to physically kill anyone, it's going to be the one that we were planning on physically killing the entire time. So again, this is a situation of we're kind of like limping on currently. Can this run survive having just lost that bride? Like I literally have a level three character and a level five character. And that's Your it. frail bodies fail you. I don't think it can. A sad display for mortal kind. That's a level three brain, though. If anything was going to keep us alive, it was going to be a level three brain, and then the game gave me a level three brain, and now I have a level three brain, and now the runner's still alive. Oh, but everyone's on so low HP. I can go straight to the boss encounter from here. Uh, the only possibility of winning is going for the rest of the fights and trying to get extra value out of it. I embrace this fury. Not yet down to the relentless evil. There's one more bride of Iridus already out here. So what? I'd have to do two battles without losing a unit to get to the Fountain of Restoration. That's not going to happen. I could easily drop Kyle and probably build another skeleton. And if I am building another skeleton, I build them with at least green parts. So that they benefit from the Amulet of Vigor, but I may as well build them with at least blue parts. This is the bride that gets the brain. My enemy. I mean, the other Bride of Iridus is already here and has get away from him, so I think I'll focus on Flames of Passionate Love, get some extra damage in there. Back to battle. All right. And then a skeleton is made out of skull. Yeah, okay. I should know that recipe off by heart by now. So I can make a blue skull for them. Five accuracy and resistance. Great. That's really important. Their skull, bone, armor, and weapon, right? Hold my work. Hmm. I think I make just two blues. Uh, skeleton will clean up this mess later. Yeah, just two blues. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna try and get both of the skeletons in the front line on the effect of the amulet of perfection. We have to throw Kyle into the resting at the moment. So now I gotta make armor. Let's see that. Hold my word. Uh, yes. I'm gonna get one blue, that's fine, I guess. And then bones, finally. It's not and that's also only one blue. If I can make a bone. Only out of skulls. Skulls are out of dust. Yeah, I can do that, actually. 
this way. Ah, the smell of successful alchemy. So, how many <laughs> skulls do I have? I'm just one short. So, actually, I would need to make a bunch of skulls and then a bunch of bones. Yeah, that's not happening. So now we can have a green skull. Yeah. Right? No, that was wrong. Not how I needed to handle anything. Damn it. It's fine. We'll just make our new skeleton. What was the other one that we had? Evasion and lock. This is attack and lock. That's better. Hmm. It's a pretty good skeleton that we just built. Much sturdier when you strip them of their vital organs. And now we'll throw that one on you, as well as this skull. Give you just a little bit of luck. And I forgot to make the final piece of armor. I've got extra weapons. I have got extra weapons right now. Okay, so I'll also make another piece of armor so that I can actually have... Blue armor. Ah, the smell of success. Come on, Drew. You've got me. luck and resistance. Yeah, it's neat. Could be significantly worse. So this looks like the party that we can be taking into the fight here at the start of the next episode. However, that's also the battle that probably decides whether or not the rest of the run has the possibility of winning. So. I would not be surprised if at the start of the next episode, we also end up building a new party. For the moment, my name is Moon Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Iridus, Lord of the Dead. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.